Last week we welded in our first new hull plate, and this week we are going to continue on with that process, starting with welding the inside of the locker. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. This is what it looks like from the inside. The back rib is perfect. The front rib um, needs to be the weld cut all on the bottom. The top is great. The bottom, it was really hard to, to get it in the right place. It was kind of a guess. So I just have to cut the weld, push it out, and that should get everything all straightened out. This little gap right here, this is so that we can weld the whole plate continuously all the way through. Um, and I'll have to do the same. I think it'll be fine down there, but anyways. So nice and tight up here. And then it just gets more and more of a gap. So I'll just cut that, press that out with a quick clamp and weld it back on and then it'll be time to weld the inside. Before any more work could be done, we had to use the crane we built to get the welder up on deck. Logan used this block of wood to press the rib into the plate and then welded it there. And then the actual welding began. Logan mostly welded one side at a time in continuous welds. However, we did end up having some warping in the hull and we suspect that if he had welded shorter welds on each side and just rotated sides until the plate was fully welded that there would have been less heat and therefore less warping. But that's only a guess at this point. Finally got the um, inside bead run. Uh, it's not the prettiest, but man is it hard to weld that. That was not fun. I mean, you can see, I'm not a super good welder, but I make do. So you can see where I could reach. It all looks not too bad. You can see my start and stops. This is kind of messy. Pretty ugly looking welds. Um, this is the first big up hand I've done with MIG. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to get better at it. Um, this will all be ground from the outside, V'd out and welded from the outside. So hopefully I can get a better looking weld out there. Um, I don't think any of this is gonna leak. Yeah, and I'll just buff it all up nicely so that there's no sharp edges or anything for the paint to chip on. Touch it up if I have to once I get the other hull plate out. And hopefully when I go to weld that one in, I'll be practiced up enough to, to do a good job. But not too bad for uh, really not being able to see what I was doing. Uh, usually you've got your, your helmet pretty close to your work and you're able to look at the puddle. I wasn't able to see the puddle half of the time and I got, I'm gonna have sore eyes tomorrow because uh, the sensor on my helmet 
And this is an auto darkening helmet. So the sensor is right here. And there's the screen I can see through. So the sensor was going in and out back and forth when I had my head sticking over here. The sensor would go over top of here and it would auto undarken, whatever you call that. But it is what it is. Um, plates welded in from the inside. I can go to the outside, V it out, um, and weld it from there. Sounds like a tomorrow job though. Woohoo! First plate. Although the initial plan was to weld the port side plate in fully before cutting out the second side, we decided instead to cut out the second place first so Logan could more easily access the places inside which he had been having trouble with, and then do the final outside welds. That's the starboard side of the hull cut out for now. It was a little bit sprung. And I thought it was just because of the plate being hammered on there, but uh, that whole plate seemed to be sprung. So hopefully nothing's really come out of alignment. This side didn't look very good to begin with. Paint wise and stuff, you can see in the video is like the the front of the hull on this side was kind of like wavy a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue. But I definitely have to make sure that this here is all nice and, and straight and flat. I have to pull this back in right here because it sprung out. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I'm going to have to have a look around and, and see what's going on. Um, but I'll have to pull that back in when I weld the new ribs in and uh, just yeah try and get it all sorted before we weld this other side back in here but yeah anyway this is what the plate looked like so there's the ribs it's got a big ugly patch welded on there's it's pretty much toast uh, it's kind of scary actually to think that that's what was holding our hull together. All right, well, it's an absolutely gorgeous day out there. Some sunshine today and warm enough. So last night when I was cutting out this section of the hull, um, the plate sprung out on the front here. And I accidentally nipped through one of the welds on the ribs um, on this back rib here. And that gap that's there is not supposed to be there. So what I think has happened, um, most of the decks cut out and there's only a little bit of uh, support the the one deck beam across those ribs that holds everything into shape a hatch frame there and it was really rotten so i've cut it all out to get better access into here and whatnot 
but uh, because that uh, deck beam isn't there anymore, it allowed the deck to uh, to fold in a little bit, which kicks this out. So it's come out here, um, and I can show you that. Maybe. So it's supposed to be nice and, and flat across here, but when we get to where the clamp is here, out a little bit and that corresponds with the gap behind that rib so what I'm gonna do is get that all straightened back out and it's easy to measure it can measure it along the deck you can see where it's sunk down so I'm basically just gonna put a jack in under the where the deck beam was in the deck push it back up try and get it as level as possible like with the proper curve into the deck. And then check this again. And then this can go be pushed back into that rib and welded. And we'll do that all while we're making the new ribs. And then we can put the new ribs in as well. And that should hold everything more or less back to where it was. Using the jacks to push the deck back didn't work as well as expected and instead he ended up using a couple come-alongs to pull it back to square, which worked a lot better. And then it was time to build some ribs. First Logan cut them to the approximate length. Next he placed them against the original ribs and made marks where the ribs bent a little. He then made cuts on those marks with a zip disc. Next he hammered the ribs to fit the shape of the original deck beams and began fitting them in the hall. Once Logan was sure the shape was correct, he welded the cuts closed to make the beam solid again. And then ground them flush so that no dirt or water could get trapped in the welds later. Last step before welding was to bring them into the blast bay to blast them so that they had the proper texture for paint later. And then it was finally time to put them in the boat. Logan used magnets, a square, and a small piece of plate the same thickness as the new hull plate to make sure that he put the ribs in the proper places.
the steel plates, the hull plates. I left a little flange so that we could weld to it um, and not have to cut out below the floor or behind the bulkhead. But those flanges were thinner in places than they need to be, so I have to build them up with weld. And that's what we're going to do. Taryn's going to go inside the boat and do fire watch, so if the paint catches on fire, it doesn't actually cause a big fire. Yay, me! That's what we're doing. And this, this is my fire extinguisher. It's actually um, a fertilizer hose thingamajigger. Well, that'll be fun. So this is what we're worried about having light on fire. And sorry for the crappy low light video, but that's what it is. So it's like the black tar epoxy and that wood right along those edges there. Fingers crossed, it's fine. As you can see, the sprayer came in really handy and was much better than throwing water at it with a water bottle like I did the last time. And this is what it looks like after, built up with welds so we know that we won't be getting any more holes. The last thing we needed to do before putting in the second hull plate was to weld the stringers on that go in between the ribs. We added two stringers in three pieces in between ribs to add some strength. Each stringer is two inch wide flat bar and was angled slightly to make sure that no water would sit in them to rust. So how are you feeling about that? That is good. That's pretty much what I was hoping for. Join us next week when we get that second plate put in before finishing up the outside welding. Thanks so much for being here with us, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. We read and try to respond to everyone.